And here we go! Oh yeah! Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into a classic game on classic computer systems known as Stunt Car Racer by MicroStyle. I think I'm locked on the loading screen. Yes, these old uh, Commodore Amiga computers were known for having long load times. Hopefully, well, I mean, the screen's disappeared, so hopefully we'll get through it pretty quickly. And lo and behold, we have Stunt Car Racer. Interesting bit of trivia about this game. This is obviously a racing stunt game. It had single player, multiplayer, and it also featured linking two computer systems together. So this is like one of the earliest versions of like a LAN party. And I, I've i never heard of a game this old supporting this kind of feature. I mean, I wonder how often it was actually used. Um, but it's it's a pretty pretty phenomenal that's in there. So this is a racing sim published by Micropo, Micropros, I should say. Again, under their MicroStyle label. So I, I don't know, I guess... This game didn't have enough pros, so they couldn't throw it under MicroPros, you know, the, the label that they published, like, Civilization and XCOM. So instead, they threw it under MicroStyle, um, or MicroPlay in the U.S. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and get started here, and you guys will see what the game is all about here. So, um, our name is Jay, and we get to, do we get to select a face, or is this, oh no, look, there I am in the bottom corner. Humpback Little Ramp. Interesting. So, who are all these... Different people. Hot Rod, WizKid, Big Ed, High Flyer, Daredevil. Look at Roadhog. He's just somebody's grandpa who, like, stumbled onto the racing track. All right, so let's go ahead and give practice a try. It's written I-S-E. I think that's the British way of spelling practice or something. I don't know. It always throws me off. I, I, isn't practice supposed to be I-C-E? I I do not know. I'm, I'm just a Canadian here. But let's practice tracks in Division One: the ski jump or the drawbridge. My, my. So the tracks in this game are basically like you racing on an elevated racetrack. As you can see here, steer to rotate the view. Well, that's cool. Look at that. It's like early 3D. Um, so I have read that this game feels like racing more like on a roller coaster track. Or I guess a good analogy for us would be like Rainbow Road on uh, Mario Kart. And uh, it has good physics, good jumps, all that stuff. Features battle damage, too. So if you take a landing too hard, your car will show damage. So uh, that, that all sounds super exciting. Oh, look. So we're getting, like, a, a front view of the car. And, it, look, we have, like, some kind of, like, motor muscle car. Um, oh, man. Look, look at that. Cool. Drop to start. Another cool feature of this game is that if you do go over the side of the track, you don't instantly die. You just get picked up and brought back. So that's kind of cool. Um, so yes, it is sort of like semi-punishing because you are racing on like kind of an elevated track. But it is it is fair in that it tries to like just put you back on the track if you mess up. And I'm actually having a fairly easy time. Whoa, that was a jump. Fairly easy time staying on the track, actually. There's the control. It kind of feels like it's almost auto steering a little bit. I can't 100% tell, but I'm pretty sure I'm driving. I'm pretty sure this isn't a demo. Wee! Oh, that's fun. Oh my god, where's the track? Oh god! Oh yeah, that's great. Uh, this game kind of reminds me of uh, Stunts, which was an old DOS racer, kind of like this. But Stunts had things like loop-de-loops and a track editor and like barns and houses. You could like drive in fields and stuff. Uh, but it did have kind of jumps and stuff. Oh my god! Oh, we took that hard. Oh, my car is just like flying into the air right now. Where are we? Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that is awesome. That is pretty awesome. So it reminds me of tr stunts, but it's like so much more forgiving. It's like this is what stunts could have been if you didn't die from every single hit. So if, if you go back, uh, I played stunts for, for my Saturday afternoon gaming series a long time ago. But if you go check it out, it's basically sort of like this kind of idea where you're on like these stunty style tracks, but just far less forgiving. Like this would kill you in stunts, that kind of jump. Actually, no, that wouldn't have. But some of, some of the other jumps I took that were a little harder, they definitely would have killed us. So, uh, yeah, this is great. Uh, and I don't know if we just practice until we're done. Let's do one more lap. And then, oh, man. And then I think we're ready to at least give it a shot of racing. Uh, so today we're going to be checking this game out on the Amiga, as we are playing right now. I also have it on Amstrad, CPC, and the ZX Spectrum. 
So I'm going to be trying it out on all of those. And for those of you who don't know, I think the Amiga, out of those three computer systems, oh, here we go. This is it. This totally feels like a roller coaster. Kablamo! I, I need like a third person perspective to see what's happening in my car. Oh, and off the track we go. Oh, look at the top of the car. The windshield is getting cracked. See that crack at the very top? Um, I think that's like our battle damage. And when that reaches maximum, then I guess we die. Very neat. Uh, but uh, going back to the computers for a second, so for people who don't know, the Amiga I think is the most advanced computer out of those three that I'll be playing this game on today. The Amstrad CPC is not as good as the Amiga, and the ZX Spectrum is uh, sort of even, even sort of lower spec. So I'm very curious to see kind of how this game uh, degrades as we go to systems that had to have to make you know slightly more compromises based on the hardware that was available. Um, and I'm hoping that this game holds up on each of them. It, it's hard to imagine, like, you know, the polygon 3D effects we're seeing here are pretty primitive by today's standards, but, you know, early computers did not do this kind of stuff easily. So I'm kind of curious to see how those earlier systems are able to translate this gameplay. But uh, anyway, let's go out. Let's go out in style, guys, by going off the uh, course here and smashing our car to bits. We Oh, that's such a huge fall. That's such a huge fall. What's happening? Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, we wrecked our car. Yes! Yes, there's only two ways to end a race if you're, if you're me. It's by winning or destroying your car. Winning or losing hardcore. I guess winning and losing are the two ways that everyone uh, plays a race. Okay, enough practice. Let's actually go and start a, race, a racing season, man. I actually want to, like, race against some people here. That's what we're here for competition we're gonna we're gonna slam junking jumping japs smile back in his mouth and make him choke on his his kind words of encouragement the little ramp we're gonna eat this course for breakfast people uh maybe we can get some battle damage on jumping jack there and uh make him die um but yeah so this game uh as we saw in the main menu um it oh press drop to start drop 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 me. Drop me. There we go. All right. Let me go. Wait. Spacebar is some kind of like turbo mode. Huh. Look at that. Okay. We're going. We're accelerating. Why? How did he accelerate way past me? Wait. Spacebar. Does spacebar slow me down? Oh, spacebar is like the brakes. Okay. So maybe like careful driving and not destroying your car is something that's important in this game. It's weird that like when you press spacebar... Like, the, the nitro in your car lights up, like your car is on fire, like it's boosting, but that actually breaks you. Um, so anyway, so we're starting this race uh, with our hands tied behind our back because we were breaking off the starting line. But that's okay, we're still going to destroy Jumping Jack. Oh my god, we almost didn't even make that jump. Oh jeez, <laughs> hanging down by the skin of our teeth. Don't mind us, folks, we're doing fine. Uh, but as I said on the opening title here, this game featured network play. You could network two computers together. Oh, man, I thought we were going to slam into the wall there. Um, and I remember as a kid going to, like, LAN parties and stuff. We play, like, Half-Life 2 and StarCraft and, like, Quake 3 and stuff. And uh, Or not Half-Life 2, Half-Life 1. Um, but anyway, like, I remember LAN parties as a kid. They were awesome. I loved land parties. I, I haven't done anything like a land party in in years, but I remember like when we were doing land parties, it kind of felt like it was like the early days of land parties. Like maybe I'm totally wrong in here, but you know the era of like sort of StarCraft and like Command and Conquer and stuff felt like the early days of land parties. Maybe land parties existed a little bit before that, but I think not a lot. Not too many games supported local area network play. Um, so it's, it's fascinating to me that this game did. Uh, now, it didn't actually support LAN play. It supported something called a null modem connection, which I don't fully understand. So here's my completely, you know, winging it explanation. But it's basically connecting uh, two computers, I think, through, like, serial port or else... Oh, we just slammed into the track there. Oh, what's happening? We're, like, bouncing over the track. Uh, I love the physics in this game. This is awesome. Oh, jeez. Oh, we're bouncing all over the place. Okay, there we go. I don't know where Jumping Jack is. I think he might actually win this race, guys. I think I think the joke's on us. We, we, couldn't, we couldn't hold muster with Jumping Jack. Um, but yeah, no modem connection. It's something that I don't think I've ever used, but I know it directly connects two computers. And I remember seeing it in, like, Doom and Duke 3D and, like, 
really like old DOS games that did offer like local area network play, they also tended to offer a null modem connection, or some of them did at least. So that's how you would connect these two systems together. So, you know, for a LAN party, you'd have to like hike your physical desktop computer over to your friend's house. And we didn't have flat panel monitors back then, guys. We had the old, the old boxy CRTs, you know, race loss, damn it. Like the 15 inch CRT, so you'd pack it all in like your mom's car and she'd like drop you off and you'd literally play till the sun rose because like how often do you and your friends get your computers together? So I can imagine it'd be a similar ordeal for bringing two Amigas together. <laughs> Look, there's just girls in bikinis hanging out in the crowd. This is awesome. Oh, and there's me totally dejected on my car like, oh man, how did I fail? The babes are never going to go for me, man. I got to learn how to race. Jumping Jack VJ. Oh, look. Jumping Jack V Jumping Jack. What the heck? Okay. And then here's some other statistics. And now I get to race again on the humpback. All right. Time to redeem myself, man. All this talk about making Jumping Jack eat his words. We actually got... We got to, like, bring it. We actually got to bring it here. Um, so this game, uh, I've never played before. Um, and it was, this was a, like, cherished, cherished Amiga game. Oh, hey, <laughs> look at the opponent's car. Look how boxy it is. Uh, that is something I remember about this game, about how, uh, the opponents are very boxy cars. Um, you know, one thing I'm wondering, one thing I'm wondering, if I lose this race, I'm gonna look this up, but maybe there are gears and I'm racing, like, like an idiot in first gear the whole time. Because, like, look at this. The speedometer goes all the way up to 230. And I'm, like, barely getting past 140. Remember back when I played uh, Buggy Boy? I was racing in first gear the whole race. And I was like, why is this so hard to win? And it's like, duh, there's uh, gears. There's a thing called gears. And if you race in the first one, you're going to lose. Oh, God. I think we're going to lose this race, too, actually. Okay, since it's clearly a lost cause, let me boot out of this. Let me just quickly peek at a manual and see if I'm missing something here. Because I don't want to race this whole game uh, in first gear like a chump. Please. Alright, I looked it up and there actually is no shifting. But, interestingly enough, Spacebar does boost you, but it boosts you in reverse. If you want to boost forward, you actually have to use the Enter key. So, there we go. There was actually a key that I was missing. So hopefully... Okay, this is the third race. Hopefully this is one we can actually finish. Actually, we finished the first one, I guess, but we just lost it. The second one, we kind of bailed on it. This one, we're actually going to race for real. So here we go, guys. You ready? I know I know how to boost. I know how to go. Let's go. Drop me. All right. And off to the races we go. We are boosting. Look at my speed. Oh, man, it's rocketing up. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at the speed. So I guess sometimes it's advantageous to boost in reverse to like slow down so you don't destroy your car. But uh, it was kind of fun there to ram the guy. Um, now this game, notoriously, the uh, computer opponents are rendered very poorly, as you saw there. He was just like a single polygon with wheels. But wow, we're flying through this course now. I think for us now, the, the key thing is going to be avoiding damage. Because we don't want to get so damaged that we actually uh, come to lose the race. So here we go. Boost! Boost! Oh god, I can barely stay on the track. Oh, I'm grinding my way off of the track. I'm Tony Hawking it. Man, I think we, I think uh, good old Jumping Jack there has been left in the dust. All right, so pro tip when you're playing a new video game, it never hurts to look up the buttons because if you're missing a key button, you may have a hard time beating the game. Man, we're up to like 230 miles. Is it miles or kilometers? I guess it's kilometers because it's a British game, but that's still pretty fast. So for you Americans, 200 uh, kilometers an hour is like 160 miles an hour. No, wait. It's 120 miles an hour or something like that. Okay. We've fallen off the track. That's okay. Uh, Lakitu came and picked us up. Oh, no. There he goes. <laughs> Go. Got it. We got to catch up to junk Jumping Jack. We're doing so good. But then I guess we kind of got we kind of got a little cocky. Just gun. I don't know how much, how much boost you have. It kind of seems like... You have a semi-unlimited amount of boosting. Um, if that's true, then we might stand a chance here. Come on. I don't know how many laps there are either. I'm assuming two or three, which means we either got to pass him, like, right now, or we got, like, one more shot at this. Like, just catching up to this guy is proving to be difficult. Oh, God. 
Thank God my car has like the best grip ever on a track. Oh, and we're off the track again. Uh, okay, guys, I think I think we lost this one too. Damn it. Okay, hold on. Let, let's go ahead and just eject out of this race as well. Okay, we lost again. We're not taking our time. We need we need. Okay, we're gonna take one more shot at the Amiga version here, and I'm gonna try my best to not screw up, not mess around. We gotta beat Jumping Jack at least once here. Um, or Roadhog, I guess. Maybe we can beat the old man. If they give us a shot at the old man, maybe we can beat him. Yes, they are. <laughs> six of six, the humpback. We've successfully failed our way down to racing against the retired... Uh... All right, here we go for all the marbles against the old man on the humpback. We're going to use our trusty capacity to boost to make this guy eat our dust. We're going to burn rubber and have him eat dust. I don't know if there's any other car terms, trash terms I know. That's pretty much it, but that's okay. Okay, there we go. Drop. I don't know what the drop button is, actually. Okay, come on, old man. He's racing in a traditional pink triangle car, and he is kicking our butt right off the bat. I thought opponents are supposed to get easier if you lose repeatedly. <laughs> this game needs a lesson in difficulty curve. Um, where I need a lesson in driving. One or the other. I, either I need to get better, or this game needs to get easier. Yikes. Oh, God. It, it's remarkably easy to stay on the track as I kind of grind off the track there. As long as you don't, like, really screw it up. Oh, it's fun to watch, like, him go over the jumps. Weehaw. So he gives us a view of, like, what we're actually doing when we're on the track here. Um, I already said this game reminds me of Stunts, which is a really great uh, DOS game. Although you do die pretty easily in that game. I love this one, how you can do these jumps and bounces and not completely die. Uh, but it also reminds me of uh, one of my favorite DOS games, although it's not as old as this. Um, it's more like the 90s, which is a game called uh, Whiplash, also known as Fatal Racing. I've actually played it a couple times on my channel. Um, I love it so much. Um, and there's so many tracks that, you know, and it's basically I've described it as NASCAR meets Hot Wheels, where you have like loop-de-loops and jumps and stuff, but you're you're still like racing like NASCAR style cars, and there's pit stops, and you can like kill other drivers if you like ran them out of the pit stop so they can't like repair their damage of their car. It's it's a pretty awesome game. Um, if you guys have never heard of it, you should definitely either check out my video just to like see what it's about, or if I've piqued your interest, I highly recommend tracking it down. Um, you can find it online not with, without too much difficulty these days and just give it a shot because it is it is a blast. And I've always kind of wished that game would get like a sequel or like a re-release on, on consoles or something. Not because I necessarily think it would do so much better on consoles, but just it'd be nice if it was in like a store where you could get it. I don't even I don't even think it's in Steam or GOG. It may be, it may be, but uh, I I mean last time I checked, which admittedly was years years ago, it definitely was not. Um, the one thing this game is lacking, though, is any kind of, like, music. It's a very sort of solemn race. You hear, like, the rickety sounds of, like, your car getting damaged, and that's about it. Every time you go over a jump, you hear a little bit of uh, noise, but uh, that's that's it. So, God. So what I figured out is when you're boosting, you don't seem to really be able to steer. So it's like you kind of have to, like, line your car up and then boost. And if you boost around a turn, you can, like, easily go off the rails. So I'm trying to boost as much as I can, but, like, I cannot catch this guy. This old man, his years of experience turn out to be actually highly adv advantageous. This old man. My God, I'm never going to catch him. I, You know what? I, Oh, <laughs> damn it. We were holding it together so well. I feel like we're falling in slow motion. It's like five frames a second as we hit the ground. Damn. Well, we're going to win that race anyway. But uh, I wonder if there's footage out there. Of uh, people playing this game, um, like, through a null modem or something like that. Like, that that would be pretty cool to find. I don't know if it, you know, I, I would even take, like, a modern modern footage. I lost the race. of so two people, like, nowadays who hooked up two Amigas to play this game. Um, but imagine finding footage from, like, the 80s of, like, two friends, you know. It was, like, converted from, like, a Betamax camcorder or something. And then somebody put it on YouTube. That would be amazing. That's, like, the world's first LAN party right there. So, uh, it kind of makes me wonder what, what what the first actual, like, network-connected video game was. Because I don't know if it's this one necessarily. I, this is pretty old, but I don't know if it's this one. Anyway, we lost again. The babes are not coming to us. Everyone's got their back turned to us, and we're just sitting on our car in shame, on our, on our dirt buggy. Okay, so, 
Long story short, we suck. <laughs> Which it is not admittedly not that big of a surprise. But so far, this has been pretty fun. We've seen a couple of tracks here on the Amiga. Armed with our new training from the Amiga, I think it's time to go check out the Amstrad CPC, see how this game translates on slightly um, less competent hardware. I mean, the Amstrad CPC was was a great old retro computer, but the Amiga definitely had, uh, you know, better processor and colors and stuff. So let's see what it looks like in the Amstrad CPC, and then, as I say, we'll work our way down to the ZX Spectrum. Alright, so here we are in the Amstrad CPC version, Stunt Car Racer, again by MicroStyle. Again, the game did not earn the label of MicroProse. It's interesting that this is a MicroProse game, though, you know, like the same banner as Civilization and XCOM, which are great games by themselves. Alright, this is copyright Jeff Cramond. Um, interesting bit of trivia, both the Amstrad and the ZX uh, games were actually programmed by a guy named Pete Cook, as it says, conversion, but uh, Jeff Crammond was the original author on, uh, I guess, Commodore of uh, computers, so he didn't do the conversion, somebody else did. Uh, but these were all like one-man teams. Back in the day when one person could program a video game, it was like a different, different era, guys. For default keys... Uh, press 1. I will just go with default. I assume they're the same as the Amiga, but uh, maybe it'll be proven wrong. I guess we'll see. Um, the computers back back in these days are really slow. I pressed the 1 key, just waiting for it to like acknowledge that something has been uh, clicked here. Uh, while we're waiting, we can talk about the fact that, uh, you know, when I was kind trying to decide what system to play this game on, um, I intention originally I was just going to try the Amstrad and the ZX, but I kind of realized that um, I hadn't played like Amiga or even any Commodore system in quite a while, and I feel like you know, like I make an effort on my channel to try all sorts of uh, different. Oh, we're going with color, obviously. We have a color color monitor slash TV. Oh well, man, back in the day, people didn't necessarily have. Uh, computer monitors set aside for their computers sometimes they connect TVs man what a, what a different era it was back then um, but anyway I make an effort to try and play different systems on my uh, channel and I I really like the idea of Commodore systems it's just that I for whatever reason have not played too many in the last uh, little while so I thought it's time to change that and uh, the Amiga is a system produced by Commodore, so there you go. It's not a Commodore 64 game. I, I need to play more Commodore 64 at some point. But there's just there's so many systems out there, guys. It's hard to uh, kind of keep track. And this is running really slow. Like, so slow, it's unbelievable. Uh, like, I've pressed the down arrow, and, like, nothing is happening. I think, actually, i got to pause here for a second and try and fix this, because... Uh, I feel like I'm getting like anywhere between zero and one frame a second and that is just way too slow Okay, we seem to have fixed the problem and as you can see the game runs much better now It's not at running at one frame a second. So here are all the other racers. It's the same as the other game So we'll go ahead and get started here so we can practice go to the racing season or Load or save. I don't know actually how to move the menu up or down. Okay, I guess we're gonna practice. Why not? We'll practice in Division 1 because the arrow keys don't seem to work. And we'll try the ski jump and we'll figure out the controls as we go. So as you can see, it's not as colorful as the Amiga. It feels a little more like we're in an advanced version of Excite Bike actually based on the colors in the menu, which I actually dig. Excite Bike was awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, this is definitely Definitely a bit of a downgrade from the Amiga, but I'm hoping the physics and fun is still here. Because as I've said many times before, graphics are not everything. Though, it, the argument can be made that when you're at this level of simplicity, you know, you, you will miss the good graphics. Alright, let's see. I'm holding forward. That does... My wheels are spinning, but nothing seems to be happening. Am I, am I actually going, or am I just like going in reverse down the hill? Okay. So we got to find new buttons here. So I'm running my fingers over all the buttons on the keyboard. Oh, I seem to be going forward. What am I holding? T? T seems to do it. Uh, how do I turn? How do I turn? Turn! Turn! Nope, nope, just don't just drive over the ledge. Okay. All right, well, uh, the old gaming technique of just trying to figure out the buttons. When, when T is your forward button, I feel like you got some funky controls. So give me a second to look this one up uh, as my car just grinds into the dirt here. 
You know what I'm remembering too? There was a define keys option. So I had to just look up a manual. I wasn't able to find one. I found like a French manual. So it said S and D were keys. Uh, so here we go. Okay, spacebar. So the spacebar makes me go forward now. S and D do nothing. Okay, clearly we got to go to find the keys. All right, let's try this one more time here. Can't believe I had to look up a French manual. Was, my, my choices were French or German. Couldn't find an English manual for this game. Uh, but thankfully, thankfully they give you the option to find your keys. So we're definitely going to take that. I didn't think it would be necessary. User key up is up. Down is down. Left is left. Right is right. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Okay, enter will be fire. Press fire to continue. All right. Actually, I should have pressed uh, space is fire. Whatever. Color monitor. Our name is J once again. Division whatever. All right, here we go. Let's practice on a higher division. Let's see what a division four track is like. Oh wait, we did one of these. We did the the humpback, the little ramp. Those are division four tracks. I thought they'd be like Death Eater and like you know the Widowmaker, not like the humpback and the little jump. Uh, let's see what's in here. The big ramp, stepping stones. I like the sound of that. They're so they're mixing up the tracks a bit. Man, does this not seem like Excite Bike? Like when it's showing you all these the setup of the tracks and stuff. Like just the colors alone look so Excite Bike ish. All right, let's do this. We finally got the keys figured out. Green, I imagine we are racing in green meadows along elevated tracks in a farmer's field or something like that. Press drop to start. We never defined a drop key. I'm going to assume it's down or some such thing. I mean, that would make a lot of sense, right? Could also be our fire key. Could be enter. All right, let's do it. Okay, steering to the left and right. Oh man, the steering is so slow. Steering is so slow. So I don't know if this game is supposed to run this slow. Like I don't know if it ran this slow on, on Amiga, but the turning, oh my God. Was that, it? was that a pit? It was hard to tell. It's hard to tell. I can't discern a line that represents road from a pit necessarily. But uh, you know, it's a little slower than the Amiga and obviously the graphics are not as as good but like it doesn't feel like that that far off oh and I, I love the like cheesy fire effects here for like turbo yeah we are boosting oh man listen to the sound effects this game I feel like has more sound effects on the Amstrad than it did on the Amiga I'm trying to get us up to 88 miles per hour guys oh god I almost fell off the track there we go oh my god we're flying all over the place all right, so it's, it's basically the same game. Um, oh, God. What, where are we? Where are we? Oh, my God. What's happening? Where am I? I'm, I'm parallel with... The, I, I'm, like, rotated towards the ground. What's happening? Oh, my God. Okay, I, I kind of lost the road there, hardcore. Um, I, I guess let's carry on. We should try and finish at least one track on the Amstrad. Um, I was thinking maybe I would like try a few tracks, but honestly like the gameplay feels that much slower than the Amiga And given that we've already seen the Amiga. I kind of just want to like jump for whoa. What's happening? We're, we're down again. Oh my god. We're not even gonna finish look at the damage on our car We're just we're straight up gonna be destroyed this car. She's not gonna make it. Where are we? What's happening? What I'm just driving towards a wall. I wrecked my car <laughs> All right, well, that was that was uh, Stunt Car Racer on the Amstrad CPC. Um, you know what? It's interesting. These old games, often the way they work... This one didn't work this way because I don't think it had an arcade release, but I could be wrong on that. But often for these old arcade games, or these old games, there'd be like an arcade release, which was the best version of the game. And then you'd go into different computers, and they'd each would be sort of like a downgrade from the arcade version. This feels like the Amiga version was the arcade version, and this is sort of like the home port, where it's sort of like, it's getting the essence of the game, but it's definitely not holding up to the Amiga. Uh, but if you did have an Amstrad... Uh, I could see this being interesting. Um, I've definitely, I definitely played games like this on DOS when I was a kid, um, on my on uh, old monochrome monitors and so on. Okay, so we've seen the Amstrad CPC version. Let's pop over and see one last version of this game on the good old 
ZX Spectrum. All right, stunt car racer on the ZX. Now, the ZX is uh, a system that I've grown to kind of love. And it's such a bizarre color scheme of, like, red, uh, red, white, yellow, green, cyan, and dark blue. Like, it's such an interesting color palette. Just its color palette alone uh, has, like, bemused me over the years. So um, I have, like, a soft spot for this. Um, what the, What just happened? Did I exit the game? It says K at the bottom. Go sub. Uh-oh. What? How did, how did this happen? All right, there we go. Man, I feel like I've just had the worst luck getting this game to run on all systems here. All right, now we, we learned our lesson on the Amstrad. Always define your keys. So we want... Oh, okay. Uh, how about uh, up? No, wait. Up. Oh, damn it. <laughs> That's not what I wanted. Left, right, fire. Okay. Uh, press break to choose again. What's break? Uh, how about we just reset this thing? I will get this game working. I swear it, guys. By all the gods, old and new, I will play this game. Okay. Up, down, left, right, fire. Boom. We got it figured out. Once again. Oh, we're ja now. I went to, I typed in J. It didn't register the, the Y. I pressed it too fast. All right. Should we practice? Practice one more track, I guess. How about the roller coaster? I feel like that's a good track to end on for Stunt Car Racer because the game is described as sort of being uh, roller coastery. Oh God, even drawing this track is going so slow. <laughs> Doesn't give me a lot of hope for the, the speed of the game, but we're gonna give it a shot. Um, the color scheme, by the way, as always on the ZX looks awesome. I think I like this color palette a little better than the Amstrad's. Uh, the ZX has such an interesting sort of like color scheme where like it's its screen is broken up into like cells and every cell can only be one color. So like notice the engine, the parts of the engine that are yellow uh, right near the edge where there's like a black line. The yellow like carries on where the engine should be gray if you can kind of like see what I'm discussing. Basically like uh, this, the screen is just broken up into like um, clusters of I think it's like 8 by 8 or uh, four by four possibly pixels and every sort of cluster is only given like one color it can be black and something else And so it kind of creates these weird coloring artifacts, but uh, But I, I will say that so far this ZX version is handling very well. I was oh wait Did I just drive? <laughs> oh, I missed a turn. Okay. Well, it's hard to see what's a turn and what's just oblivion We're driving towards yellow death now um, so we messed up there a little bit, but I will say I, w I was thinking that on the ZX here the game would run the worst uh, Because you know the ZX is just not as powerful as those other You know systems especially like the Amiga like compare the Amiga to this. It's like night and day But I I'm like I'm, I'm semi I'm semi impressed with like uh, the the fluidity with which it's sort of able to draw things like I've never seen a game like this ever on the ZX I didn't know it was capable of this if I owned a ZX Spectrum back in the day And I spent my days playing like Chuck E. Egg and stuff and then somebody showed me this this would be like You know seeing Star Fox for the first time um, I'm really trying to pay attention to where the road ends and where a turn emerges I mean, I guess right now I can't see you know right in front of me. Oh, there we go it was like going up a hill It's kind of hard to figure out a little bit of shading would have helped, but I know the ZX is, is not capable of that. But uh, yeah, pleasant, pleasantly surprised. I think for for sure the Amiga version was the best of all the versions here. But uh. anyway, Sun Cart Racer here was one of the games of the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. Interesting, one last little bit of trivia is that uh, back in 2003, uh, news released that there was actually a sequel in the works for this game. Um, and the original developer was, you know, working on translating and updating and modernizing the game. And this is a classic, one of the early racing games that people had on their computers that uh, was sort of stunty, you know, stunts based. Uh, and maybe it, maybe it inspired Whiplash or Fatal Racing. Maybe the devs of Fatal Racing remember this game. Uh, maybe the devs of Stunts on DOS uh, were familiar with this game and took some inspiration there. I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but I would not be surprised. Um, because this game definitely sort of has the DNA of those those later games. So maybe um, it uh, it is, you know, I have this game to thank for Whiplash, potentially. Um, so I could definitely see, you know, people getting excited about the uh, sequel. But unfortunately, um, it appears to just be Vaporware, where the author 
said he was working on it, and then, you know, he, he probably was, but it just didn't materialize, you know, he uh, abandoned it, and uh, as far as I know, the sequel has never been finished, never released, nothing like that, it basically is just sort of forgotten these days. Oh my god, I did it again! That part of the track is so deceptive, I can't tell, oh no, wait, oh, oh my god, I thought I just drove off a cliff, but I think I, think I was doing a jump, uh, okay, I thought I was dead. <laughs> Anyway, um, anyway, as I said, this game is one of the games in the book of Thousand One Video Games you must play before you die. And um, I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say that this is like a game that is so enthralling and fun that if you've never tried it, you have to play it. But I will say that if you owned a ZX, an Amstrad, an Amiga, and you never gave this game a shot. Um, this is actually, like, a pretty good racing game for those systems, I think. You know, my metric for whether or not I think a game uh, holds up and is good is whether I have a bit of fun when I play. You know, there's some games that are more fun than others. Some are a little more of a chore than others, I'll be honest. Um, but I feel like the physics in this game are, like, surpri- they hold up surprisingly well. Um, there's some choppiness issues on some of these older computers, but all in all, I think it's pretty impressive. And I think there is a little bit of fun here. Um, so I would say that if you are looking, if you did grow up with those systems, you never tried this, I would definitely check it out. Might be a little bit of fun. You know, we're not using our booster. Here we go. This is how we get the real speed going. I forgot about the booster. Um, if, however, you know, you didn't grow up with these older systems and you've played other more modern racing games, this might be a little too dated for you. So, um, I think it will, you know, it will appeal to a certain niche of retro gamer. Um, and those are my thoughts. What do you guys think, though, of Stunt Car Racer? Oh, my God! See, that's kind of fun. We totally screwed up. And it's really hard to figure out exactly what happened because the, the resolution is just lines. But I'm pretty sure we overshot the course hardcore. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, you know, thinking of the fact that uh, I was saying how I like to play a variety of systems, and I feel like I haven't played Commodore in a while, which is what motivated me to make sure I check this game out on the Amiga. Are there other systems that you guys would like to see me check out more of? Um, you know, like, obviously, the, the, main, the main reason I don't check out all the systems is just there's so many that, like, it's, it's hard to, like pick and choose and like find time to try them all um so it's by by necessity some are going to fall by the wayside but i'm just curious like what's your what's your favorite retro system and is it one that i cover a lot is it one i don't uh, maybe you know if you if you suggest a retro system to me that will jog me to say you know what actually i do want to play a game on that system soon and maybe i'll do it no guarantees but you never know but yeah what are what's your favorite retro system um, and is there one that I've been neglecting that maybe I should uh, give some second thoughts to? Let me know that in the comments down below as well. Um, and as always, guys, um, I hope you have had fun today, if nothing else. If that is true, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with all your friends and family, blah, blah, blah. You guys know the YouTube deal. Every single YouTuber says the same stuff at the end. I don't know why I continue to say it. Probably just annoying the hell out of you, but uh, I feel like I got to at this point. I'm part of the YouTube cult. It's, it's, it's in the indoctrination papers, guys. We got to tell you to like our videos and subscribe, you know. So there you go. Anyway, until next time, my friends, you take care of yourselves. I'm just going to be here racing in, glor in glorious yellow land, and uh, I will see you guys soon. All right, guys. Peace. Remarkably, even this version, I think, has better sound than the Amiga, just in the sense of, like, there's more sound. Not that it's better, but there's, just, there's more of it. So I guess it's a quantity over quality thing they were going for here. But uh, the Amiga was kind of like the quiet version. It looked great. Don't get me wrong. A little quiet.